forging cyber, forging cyber security experts. Secure Ninja. Secure Ninja is excited to announce our new line of video training courses we're calling the Online Sensei Series. These are on-demand classes available 24-7, 365 at your convenience and taught by the best instructors in cybersecurity. Here's a complimentary taste of Secure Ninja's exclusive Cyber Kung Fu version of EC Council Certified Ethical Hacker version 8. This course was developed and taught by Larry Greenblatt and Tom Uptegrove. This unique series will enhance your comprehension of EC Council Certified Ethical Hacker version 8 curriculum. So here's Larry Greenblatt with Cyber Kung Fu Module 2, Footprinting and Reconnaissance. Enjoy! Alright, welcome to Module 2. Uh, officially, this domain is called uh, footprinting and reconnaissance, but I think maybe a better term would probably have been uh, passive footprinting and reconnaissance, because we're really going to be doing this in, in the next, uh, through Module 2 and Module 3, as Module 4 as well. They're all basically reconnaissance, but here we're going to try and do it as passively as possible. So I don't want to alert the target uh, organization or uh, network that I'm trying to find out. Um, and I, I want to get information like what operating systems do you run, what version uh, of uh, firewall uh, OS. And I just go to a job uh, search says, and you're looking for somebody with Cisco PIX experience. All right, so I think that's a pretty good indicator that you're running uh, a, a Cisco PIX. So again, footprinting and reconnaissance, official name of the domain, but the context really is very passive reconnaissance. So I want to learn about the people who work there. I want to learn about the machines that they have, you know, what hardware, and this will help me focus my attack, the operating systems, the versions, the applications. And people are very important too, right? I mean, that's, that's the major thing. It's people are sharing information, so that's the key. And, and, and that may really help uh, me understand uh, social uh, engineering vulnerabilities. Uh, in fact, I know I'm vulnerable to them too. I always worry when I teach this stuff that people go, oh yeah, you think you're so great and they'll use me to attack me. I'm like, no, I don't think I'm that great. I, I think I know some things. And as uh, our, our teacher, Joe Lewis, said, he hated followers. You know, he said, uh, I hate a follower because I know I make mistakes in life. And when I make mistakes, followers don't help me. I need somebody as a leader in another field. So, uh, But there are some neat things we can figure out. And as we say, hacking is... Uh, figuring things out makes something cool happen. So we're going to go look at job sites. We're going to look at news sites. Google, uh, Johnny Long wrote the book, uh, Google Hacking, I think in 2005, totally revolutionized the entire uh, world and um, uh, of penetration testing. Actually, it's called Google Hacking for Penetration Testers and just amazing some of the stuff. I mean, it's embarrassing. Like the, perhaps the worst is these people plug in these cameras and whether it's net access panasonic whatever they all have this webcam capability well that means there's a url search string and well i could put in url do you have this string and identify all these insecure cameras and i'm not going to do it here because uh i just don't want to expose anybody but gosh you try it at home and, and it's pretty bad you'll, you'll find yourself some of them if it's like a dot edu they may have wanted it that way but if it's an ip address it's very likely somebody's house and and they don't realize their, their camera's there for everybody um, <laughs> Laura Chapel says, uh, what happens in Vegas stays in Google Cache. Actually, probably a better uh, place than the Internet Archives. When I show this to people, uh, they're often, if you're not aware, shocked that pretty much everything that's ever been on the Internet is archived. So uh, I'll go over to the Internet Archives here. This is what my website looks like now. And yes, I did choose this uh, to, to show off that I was considered a Jedi Knight. Actually, no, they just went by my LinkedIn title. Uh, but I did win an award last year for the Easy Council. So that was a great honor. Uh, and uh, if I want to explain my logo, we like to think that uh, Tom and I are helping take ancient wisdom of the past, right? Our, our martial arts knowledge, the art of war, and linking us to the future. I'm a big space cadet, and you'll notice that's an O'Neill space colony. Uh, so I, I think that, the, that all the problems we're having today, it's really, we're going through some rough times today with... Um, changes in, in the environment and, and things like that. And I think the solution is to keep going further. If we get all of manufacturing into space, we'll alleviate most of our environmental problems. I don't want to go back to a simpler time. All right, but what did my website used to look like? All right, so um, the Wayback Machine, I'm gonna click there, I put my, my address in there. And wow, well, let's say up to now, they have 364 versions of my website going back to October 2001. What did it look like then? Wow. 
Yeah, what happens in Vegas stays on the internet, guys. This is why I warn kids now. I say it all the time that uh, besides loss of life, the worst loss is reputation. I don't have anything that I know it's embarrassing up there that I know of. Um, so I don't contact them. Apparently, if you contact the Internet Archives, they would remove things if you say, I'd rather that it's not up there. Uh, but most people don't know it's there. And this is why awareness is your number one countermeasure. If you didn't, weren't aware that this stuff happens, and I, I, I coach a lot of kids. We have a lot of kids at the karate school. It's our largest uh, audience there. And I get to work with it, and I, I tell them, you know, be careful on the Internet. You know, be careful what you put up there. You can't just erase it. It's still up there. All right. Um, by the way, for your test, historically, there's always been a couple of questions on the archive. So remember archive.org. Now, there's a lot of ways to uh, uh, query the WHO as registrars. Uh, I believe on your test, you may have to do it from the command line. But Sam Spade is a very old tool that I love. It hasn't been updated, I think, in 13, 14 years, but it does a lot of great stuff. So using Sam Spade, uh, I looked up my website. Actually, you know, who registered this domain name? And some people put in real contact information, could be used for reconnaissance later or some social engineering vulnerability. Um, but I also get a lot of other information like the name servers here. Now, there are some built-in tools. I could uh, crawl the website, mirror this entire website to a local directory and search that for email addresses, for hidden form values. Nice. Yeah, uh, this is an old tool. I don't know that I would actually use this tool for mirroring though. I found that, um, and you may need to know this for your test too, that there's a, a, a file called robot.txt that a web server will have, and it's kind of an agreement, hey guys, to see these directories here, um, would you not query or, or crawl those directories, please, thank you. And um, Sam Spade seems to respect that. But I could use a tool like HTTrack, and I could tell it to ignore it. And I get a lot of uh, good pen testers in my class. I'm very lucky to have uh, students who are smarter than me, but they share it with me. And they, and they said, actually, you look in robot.txt, and <laughs> that's where you want to go. Because they're saying, don't look in this room. Mm, let me look in that room. Right? So pretty cool. Now, that's for my uh, server, for the web server, but I have my domain name servers here, and I can click on that. Right? And now that came up here. So that's my DNS. And now uh, I could check to see if I can download the entire zone records. Uh, which my ISP doesn't like when I do. I can remember though when I started here, you could always download um, universities. They were always available. And that could be um, uh, useful not only as a reconnaissance attack, but suppose I spoofed your IP address and then I asked for his own transfers from everybody. Probably do a nice uh, denial of service there. Yeah, they call those uh, DNS amplification attacks. So you can use tools as amplifiers as well. Uh, Netcraft, uh, if I want to scan a site and I want to know what OS you're running and I run an NMAP port scan, uh, you're going to see it. Their, their IDS will register. That IP address just tried to do that. <clears throat> well, Netcraft is always doing that for you anyway. So I could go to Netcraft oops, and um, they searched Internet Network Defense and they told me all kinds of stuff. Look at that. Uh, they're currently at GoDaddy. They run on Linux. Here's the IP address. They run Apache. And nobody in Internet Network Defense saw that, right? They, they didn't see me, I did, but they saw Netcraft do it. I like a little plug-in, too, for Firefox that I, I use called World IP. Um, there's a bunch of plugins. They actually have a Netcraft toolbar. I, I just rebuilt this workstation. I, I realized I forgot to put that in there. But uh, look at this one, though. It tells me the uh, target machines, uh, where I'm going to. So right now, uh, Netcraft is running in the United Kingdom. I could see their autonomous system number. That's a, a routing name uh, for a domain. Uh, I could see who their registrar is. I could see, now I know I'm being natted inside here. I'm on 192.168. address, but I can see how I'm going out. I'm going out. So there's some device at the perimeter of, of this uh, location, the studio, that sent me out at 75.150.153. Great plugin. And I mentioned Google hacking, just so many things. Now, there's a lot of operands uh, you, you can play with. So um, some of my favorite, though, I notice, like, for instance, when I'm looking for security um, lights, uh, if I do a, just a generic, what is a standby light? I find it looks just like emergency lighting. That is, the power went off and I, I needed it. But if I say site colon dot mil or site colon dot gov, I find, oh no, that's not what a security light is. No, the standby light and security lighting, according to dot mills, is uh, something that's tripped on uh, when there's suspicious activity. So you can focus your things. A lot of times when I try to eliminate noise and I'm doing some Cisco, uh, look, I always say at site colon cisco.com. I don't just want to see anyone's opinion. 
Um, I also might want to search for certain file types. I record, just, just give me an XLS, just give me a PPT or a PDF. Now, the ones you t historically have needed to know for your test, and this is the way those camera searches, in URL, or all in URL, so you can have multiple terms, in title, if any of these words are in the title, or all in title, and uh, very handy to, to pick out maybe a, an organization's name. So I, I, I go to Internet Network Defense and I say, is anybody linked to this? Right? There's actually a special operand for that link too. You could just say cash, so you, you're pulling it from cash. A lot of great stuff, can't say enough about it, so you need to get that book if you're going to be serious about being a penetration tester. All right, so in summary, um, we're really going to be doing reconnaissance for the next uh, few domains. Again, we're going to scan for live IPs. We're going to scan for listening services. We're going to scan for vulnerabilities. We're going to enumerate usernames and shares. So in this context, this domain is just about the passive reconnaissance. We're looking at public sources. If you're a publicly traded company, there is information about you in the Security Exchange uh, Edgar database. And a lot of the time, you know, I can get officer names and stuff, maybe find them on LinkedIn and, and do some more social engineering there. But also historically, people like to look at mergers and acquisitions. Uh, whenever there's a time of change, that's a perfect time to come in and say, oh, I look like, uh, it looks like we work for you now. Hey, we're rolling around in IDS. And uh, uh, before we do that, I, I was wondering if we could see your rule set. Right, so really neat stuff. Often people will take weak company and connect it to strong company. There's just already, oh, make the key simple. Just make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine until we, until we get everything working. Right. Or people searches. Now, sometimes they'll just do like a basic background. Usually these things want a little extra money if they want to find more. But just looking up somebody's name, you can find out so much public information. Uh, were they ever arrested? Uh, where do they uh, have uh, uh, houses? Do they ever own a house? It's amazing how much stuff is really publicly available. And social networking circles. You know, people always warn me because I'm a big Facebook user. Like, dude, I wouldn't use Facebook, man. You know, the NSA is looking at that. China is looking at that. Hackers look... Yeah, I know, that's why I have a billboard too. I expect people are looking at it, but still, you gotta be careful. You know, I also link to uh, family members. I said, my, my own worst enemy, but after me is my family. That can be awfully embarrassing sometimes, but hey, I just have to accept, you know, if I don't start trouble with other people, that hopefully they won't pick on me. That's all I ask. And, and you know, of course, there's always gonna be criminals. Uh, and just be careful, as Laura Chapel says, what happens in Vegas stays in Google Cache. So anything you put out there, watch for and usually determine any information security is information leakage. If you don't want it out there, don't say anything that you don't want everybody to see. All right, thanks. Any questions, Alicia? How much time should you really spend on intelligence gathering? Well, remember we have passive and active, and the more I can get done passively uh, without sending a packet to the target, uh, the much uh, uh, a greater likelihood that my penetration is going to be successful. So I've heard people tell me up to 70% of their work is just doing passive intelligence gathering. Right. Yeah. Okay. Think before you act, right? Absolutely. Awesome. Definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this short preview. If you'd like more information on the growing list of online Sensei Series courses, then head over to secureninja.com slash Sensei Series. I'm Alicia Webb. Thanks for watching. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.